Hey guys, in this video, the fantastic Mr. T is going to be talking to you about bias. So starting off with what is bias, how bias can be avoided, and then constructing arguments and viewpoints. Now don't forget to go with this video over on my website, you can download a free revision guide, which will make sure you cover everything you need for your exams, you can tick it off as you go along, and then to help you improve your grades, there's a workbook just waiting for you. Today we're looking at bias. Bias is a really critical issue in studying citizenship or politics. The Cambridge Dictionary gives the definition of bias as the action of supporting or opposing a particular person or thing in an unfair way because of allowing your personal opinions to influence your judgment. A simplified definition, more suitable for GCSE, would be that bias is favouring or opposing a person or view rather than remaining neutral. There are many different types of bias, but these are ones which are particularly useful to the study of GCSE citizenship. Positive bias is when you're biased in favour of someone or something. That might be a politician, that might be an idea, that might be an institution. Negative bias is when you're biased against someone or something. Explicit bias is obvious and acknowledged and in some ways expected, such as political party broadcasts. Implicit bias is when that bias is hidden, it's not obvious, and it has to be hunted out. And it might not be obvious to someone seeing it who's not been educated in citizenship. A really good example of that would be campaigns done by pressure groups, which look like they're factual, but in fact are implicitly biased. We see bias in a lot of places. One of the most obvious places is newspapers. Most newspapers especially the tabloid newspapers, have an overt political bias. They support either a political party or a political position. A really good example is The Sun. The Sun has always been regarded as a paper of the right, and currently it's very supportive of the Conservative government in the UK. The tabloids are biased. The broadsheets tend to be, but often that bias is less obvious and they make at least an attempt to be factual, and in some cases, to be relatively neutral. Magazines are similar to newspapers. Many of them will have a political bias, such as The Spectator, which has a bias towards the centre-right. Party political broadcasts have obvious and explicit bias. That bias is built into what they are. Social media sees a lot of bias. It's not the platforms themselves, like Facebook or YouTube or Instagram, which are biased. It's the content on them. Often this bias will be hidden. Memes, graphics, posts will appear to be neutral or appear to be from an ordinary member of the public, but in actual fact, they will have a political bias behind them. They will be supportive of a particular ideology or a particular party or individual. Social media and fake news associated with it is playing a bigger and bigger part in political discourse. Commercial television and radio while it doesn't have obvious and explicit bias, people can buy adverts on there. And especially in the United States, but to a lesser extent in the UK, commercial TV and radio is used by political organisations and campaigning organisations in a biased way. Literature and journalism, like newspapers, often will have a political bias. Often this will be implicit rather than explicit. Books are quite often written, especially novels, to make a political point. This is nothing new and has been happening for hundreds of years. So let's take a really common example of bias in newspapers with headlines. A neutral headline on an issue would read something like this. Labour Party proposes publicly funded broadband. A headline with positive bias would read something like this. Jezza promises free broadband for cash-strapped families. There are a few ways in which this is biased. Instead of saying Jeremy Corbyn or the Labour Party, they've reduced it to a familiar shortened name in Jezza. They've used the term free, which obviously has positive connotations. They've used the term broadband, and they've used the term cash-strapped families. Every family would like more money. What this headline in effect says is, Jezza promises you free broadband. A negatively biased headline would read something like this. Crazy Corbyn's Marxist plot to use your money to pay for crackpot broadband scheme. 
So we've obviously got crazy Corbyn. We've got the word Marxist. Most people probably aren't able to explain what Marxist means precisely, but they associate it with negative things. You've got your money in capitals. Everybody's protective of their money. So this sounds like crazy Corbyn is about to take my money to pay for crackpot broadband scheme. That's the use of emotive language. Using crackpot already implants the idea to the reader that the scheme is crazy. It's not going to work. Newspaper headlines are often biased, and this issue in particular is very good at showing that bias. A second example is social media. We see here a picture of Angela Merkel, the current leader of Germany, with the caption, we didn't win two world wars to be pushed around by a kraut. For those of you who don't know, kraut is a slang term for somebody who is German. It's a term of racial abuse. We have the use of slang in that. We have the use of a stereotype. We have emotive language being pushed around. We have the use of varied colors and textual flourishes, especially the use of red, often associated with anger. We have a very small reference to who's actually written this piece, who's written this graphic. This is a typical example of using a graphic or a meme to appeal to xenophobia and racism. And there's a classic example of bias on social media. So to conclude, how can we spot bias? And there are four questions we can ask ourselves to determine if what we're looking at is biased or neutral. Firstly, is the source trustworthy? Has this been got from a source you can trust? Or is it from a left with a source? Is language factual? Is it using precise, factual, neutral, unemotive language? Or is it using emotive language? Is it appealing to emotions to try and build up anger, for example? Is the origin clear? Is it clear who has written this? Is it clear where the funding for this piece has come from? And number four, is it appealing to a specific group of people? Is it appealing to people who are elderly? Is it appealing to people who are white? Is it appealing to people who might be angry about immigration? By asking yourself these questions, you can determine if it's likely that a source that you're looking at, for example, is biased. Ouch! This is when somebody is, I've had explained scratches.